close-up look at all your Concho Valley High School football. This is Inside the Game. Sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. Good evening and welcome back to Inside the Game where I take you well, inside the game for everything high school football here in the Concho Valley, I'm your host, Brian Cunningham. The next 15 minutes, I have a full recap from the week nine of the 2024 high school football season with highlights and scores from across that Concho Valley. And we're going to start things off with Lakeview, fresh off their open bye week, ready for their first week of district. And we're going to send it out to our very own Griff McClellan, still live from San Angelo Stadium. Take it away, Griff. Good evening, Concho Valley. I'm Griff McClellan. This was a thriller. I'm not really sure where to start. Lakeview comes up short in OT following 45-37 in a district thriller to kick off district play for both Pecos and Lakeview. Let's turn it back to the fourth quarter. Lakeview up 28-21. This game was back and forth throughout. Pecos jumps on top with a late go-ahead touchdown to go up 29-28 with a successful two-point attempt with about a minute 30 remaining. Then Lakeview goes right back down the field. Chris Alviza was phenomenal tonight, but Lakeview fails a two-point attempt. Right after that, just moments later, Pecos strikes again going up 37-34, and then at the end, Isaiah Rios, kicker for Lakeview, nails a 41-yard field goal to tie the game, saying it's OT, and that's where things got even more dramatic. This place was loud. As you can see, the fans are starting to leave now, but it was an epic thriller. Pickus eventually hangs on for a 45-37 win, stopping Lakeview on fourth and goal to close it. That's all from San Angelo Stadium for now. Back to you guys in the studio. This live shot is sponsored by AFCO Steel. Clear. Yep, no problem. Talk to you Thank you, Griff. And here is those highlights. Both teams, two and five, fresh off the open week to kick off district play. Touchdown, Lakeview. Flea Flicker, first play from scrimmage. Chris Alvizo to Esperanza, 8 nothing Chiefs after the successful two-point conversion. Touchdown, Pecos right here. 5-13 to go in the first quarter. A one-yard rushing touchdown by Joel Aguilar. Successful two-point conversion, 8-8 eight, eight tied. And we got another touchdown here. 11 to go in the second quarter. Alvizo pass to Braylon White. 15-8 Chiefs lead at this point. And another Pecos touchdown, 10-44 to end the second quarter in this one. It's a rushing touchdown by Garcia Jr. Ball poked out at the last second, but still ruled a touchdown. 15-14, to Lakeview leads at halftime. And this was an overtime thriller. Lakeview put up a last-second field goal at the end of regulation. Final score, 45-37 as Pecos wins this one in overtime. Directly into our next game, a pair of 6A teams face off Central versus Midland. The Bobcats 3-4, and four, Medina 5-2. and two. Coach Thad and Mark Smith meeting on the sideline for this one. And we're going to get an easy touchdown run right up the gut. 7-3 on this one. Second quarter, a Bulldog touchdown on the ensuing kickoff. Gavin Johnson, 82-yard return for a touchdown. 14-0 end of the half. English goes to the outside, crosses the goal line, and it's going to be 28-17 at half. And Central would walk away Defeated in this one, 56-31. Week three of district play continues as Jim Ned comes to town to take on the winless Eagles of TLCA. The Indians have won the only two matchups in this series and are 4-3 and three on the year. 46-0 Indians at half and the Eagles drop another one now. 0-8, 72-0 final in this one. Wall enters week three of district play, now 2-0 on the season where it matters the most. And in the middle of a six-game win streak as they travel to face another Concho Valley team, the Grape Creek Eagles. The Hawks already clinching a playoff spot in this one. The Hawks 7-1 on the season. The Eagles 3-5 and, and only 1-1 one and one where it counts. Hawks are 7-1, and 2-0 in district. Grape Creek 3-5. First quarter action. Wall is going to open this one up with a touchdown pass. Landing York to Briggs Jones down the sideline. 7-0 Wall later in the first. York connects with Stansbury for another long touchdown to stretch the lead to 14-0. It was all Hawks this game. Three minutes later, York is going to hook up with Kyler O'Neill on this one. Touchdown pass over the middle. 21-0 Hawks with 640 left in the first the hawks would take a 28 to cushion 28 nothing cushion lead after this first quarter touchdown run thomas lianos down the right sideline shakes off the defender hawks win this one 58-6 it wasn't even close Brady played host to the early Longhorns, holding the overall record of the series 9-5 and, and entering this matchup 6-1 and one on the season, 2-0 and oh in district, facing a 1-6 and six Longhorns team as they enter the third week of district play. The Bulldogs having clinched a playoff spot already, 21-8 at half for Brady. Final score, 42-15. Bulldogs now 3-0 oh in district. 
Coming up next on Inside the Game, we're going to continue our coverage of high school football from across the Concho Valley. Class 2A is up next. Don't go anywhere. This is Inside the Game. Welcome back into Inside the Game, where I take you. Well, of course, inside the game for everything high school football here in the Concho Valley. And our next game is a very important one for the Class 3 2A Division 1 matchup. There's a lot at stake for our next three games, with all three being 1-1 one and one in their district tied right now. Cristobal hosting Forsan for District Week 3. Both teams 1-1 one one looking for a clinched playoff spot soon. First drive, Forsan with the ball, shotgun snap, and it's a handoff up the gut. Broken tackle and a 6-0 lead early in this game after the long touchdown run. Next drive, Cristobal is moving fake handoff QB read option to the outside and he's going to outrun everyone dives to the end zone Cougars getting back into this one for San closing out another drive this time at the Cougars goal line handoff outside for the easy score Cougars under center here this time in the red zone outside handoff a cut inside with a whiff tackle and a hard fought touchdown Cristobal down 22 15 at half 36 15 final score Continuing that same close district chase, our next game from tonight is another 3-2A Division I matchup. The Ozone Alliance traveled to Colorado City to face the Wolves, both teams 1-1 one one in district play. As this close district continues to move along, Wolves with the ball to start. Quick pass over the middle. Ozona up 8-0 at this point. Wolves with the ball again. Shotgun snap this time. QB rolls right, looks downfield, throws it into double coverage. Pass incomplete on this play. Lions with the ball again this time. Fake handoff steps up in the pocket, but it's a pack of Wolves to sack the quarterback here. Wolves with the ball this time. Under center handoff. Bounces to the outside, and this one is not going to be fooling anyone. You saw a pack of Wolves. How about a pack of Lions involved in this tackle? 37-14, Ozona at the half. Final score, Lions win this one. 53-20 now, Lions 1-1. One and, one. and to close out the final 3-2A Division I matchup, the Sonora Broncos played host to the Reagan County Owls, who are 2-0 in their district. The Broncos 1-1 one and 4-3 one and and overall on the year. A third consecutive year meeting for these two, and it was a first-time matchup since the 30s. That's when it first happened. A halftime score of 14-0 in favor of the Owls. Sonora falls in this one 20-7, now 1-2 and two in district play. Switching over to the District 14, 2A Division I, fairly new blood in this matchup as the 8-ranked Mason take on the Holland Hornets, both teams 2-0 in district play. Mason in the middle of that 64-game consecutive district win streak and 6-1 and on the season for both squads. The final the score was 47-8 in favor of the punchers at half, and Mason would extend their winning streak after tonight's game to 66. District 4, 2A Division 2 sees a battle of the birds for our next matchup. The El Dorado Eagles travel to Van Horn to take on another Eagle. A six-game series in favor of El Dorado, El Dorado all-time. These two teams enter 3-4 and 2-5 and and on the year. El Dorado 1-1 one one in district play and a four-way tie for second as it sits right now. 34-0 at the halfway point. Final score 55-0. To wrap up our final Class 2A matchup, the Sterling City Eagles played host to the number eight ranked Wink Wildcats. A tough matchup for the Eagles tonight. The Wildcats enter 2-0 in the district, 6-1 overall. The Eagles sit at 1-1, 3-4 overall. 27-0 was the halfway point, and Wink would go on to dominate not only the first half, but the entire game, 41-0, Eagles down. Last few games of 2A winding down, the Miles Bulldogs take on the Hamlin Pied Pipers. The Bulldogs coming off a 48 to nothing shutout win last Friday night. These pair of five and two teams sit one and one in district play as they enter the fifth matchup all time in this battle of seven 2A Division II teams. Miles with the ball to start, the fake handoff, and Yancey playing magic here, breaking the cameraman, and he's off to the races on the board first. Later in that same game, Yancey again with the snap, drops back, Cooper in the flat, Wide open hits him, and he's going to do the rest. A crucial block downfield. Off to the races. Miles pouring this one on early with five early first half touchdowns. Final play of this reel, and special teams wanted to get involved, too. The blocked punt goes for a Miles touchdown. Bulldogs up 34-0 at the halfway point and walk away with the win. 41-0 wasn't even close. Only three total meetings for our last for our last Class 2A matchup of the night, the Junction Eagles 
travel to D. Hannes to face the Cowboys. The Eagles enter 6-1 on the season. 3-0 in district play, sitting in second place in the middle of a three-game win streak. The Cowboys sitting at 2-4 and four on the year. Now, this game is the only Concho Valley matchup that does not take place tonight. Kickoff is tomorrow, 7.30 at night. We'll have those highlights on season pass coming up this weekend. Coming up next on Inside the Game, we continue our coverage of high school football across the Concho Valley. Class 1A is up next with a potential elimination game ahead in three Concho Valley matchups. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss this. This is Inside the Game. Welcome back to Inside the Game, where I take you inside the game here across the Concho Valley. We've switched over to Class 1A now, more specifically a matchup that first kicked off in 1908. Water Valley traveled to Robert Lee for this huge valley tonight, for this huge matchup tonight. The Steers 2-0, the Wildcats 1-0. This district is so close that tonight's loser may have to just win out just to sneak into the playoffs. First quarter action, Water Valley draws blood first on this long touchdown pass, 8-0 Wildcats. Robert Lee is going to tie it here. 8-8 eight, eight in the first. It was a hookup from Brenner Sherwood to Wyatt Bosworth. Down the sideline for the score. Second quarter. Steers take 16-8 advantage of Sherwood. Finds Nate for a touchdown. Connection on the acrobatic one-handed catch on this one. Water Valley pulls within 16-14 in the second on a pitch from Landon Lacey to Kentana, who fights his way through the defense at the half. Water Valley 30, Robert Lee 22, and the final score on tonight's matchup, 62-50 in favor of the Wildcats. Continuing with District 8 1A Division 1, the Paint Rock Indians face the Erion County Hornets for these teams' 29th total matchup, splitting the series evenly at 14 apiece, with all but two of those matchups happening before 1975. Paint Rock 0 7 on the season, Erion County 2 5 on the season, and this one was all Erion County from the start. They would go on to win this one 50 to nothing. District 15 1A Division 1 saw a pair of teams face off the Bull Eden Bulldogs travel to Medina to take on the Bobcats. Eden entering their first district game, the Bobcats entering their second. The Bulldogs also at 4 and 1, Bobcats 1 and 5. Medina pulls this one out 47-43. It came down to the wire now 1 and 1 in district play. Continuing District 15 1A Division 1, the Menard Yellow Jackets and the Nooses Canyon Panthers have 12 total matchups entering tonight with the Yellow Jackets winning all 12. Also sitting at 2-0 in the district, the Panthers 0-5 on the season. Menard takes this one. Final score, 82-54. The next matchup is between two teams who are playing a third year in a row, but before 2022, they did not play each other. Since the 1930s, the Blackwell Hornets traveled to face the Bront Longhorns in the Concho Valley matchup. These two teams entered with two wins on the season and one win in district play. Final score, Hornets 72, Bront 22. Coming up next on Inside the Game, we recap our Dr. Pepper Trivia Challenge, a look at the Week 9 headlines, and a look ahead to some of those notable Week 10 matchups for Week 4 of district play. Don't go anywhere. This is Inside the Game. Welcome back into Inside the Game, but before we continue, let's recap one of our questions for this past week's Dr. Pepper Trivia Challenge. One of this past week's questions includes, what year did Water Valley and Robert Lee first face each other? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Time's up. Be sure to jump in on that Dr. Pepper Trivia Challenge sweepstakes that we have going on every week for your chance at a $20 Walmart gift card. We announce the winners every single Sunday night, new week, new winner, new trivia. And a look at some Week 9 headlines. Central likely eliminated from this playoff race after dropping their game tonight to Midland High. Lakeview was in a close one until the very end, and unfortunately, it went the wrong way. Lakeview was able to bring this one to overtime, but they were unfortunately unable to close the deal. 45-37 in that one. Wall entered this week essentially locking up a playoff berth, and everybody kind of predicted that preseason, and after tonight's dominant win, the Hawks not only look to solidify that playoff spot, but it looks like they will run away with this entire district as projected. And Mason, they now move that winning streak to 65 consecutive district wins after tonight's dominant win. Lakeview home, and we're going to take a look real quick at high school football week 10 matchups. Lakeview home for a third consecutive week, hosting the Steer of Big Springs for the second week of district play for the Class 3-4A Division 1. And the Angry Orange 
Home for the fourth week of district play. They play host to the Broncos from Odessa in this 6A matchup. Brady on the road against the Rattlers from Tolar. Both these teams lead the top of their district. That 5-3A Division II matchup. Both teams undefeated where it matters. Entering that fourth week, and we finally see Junction. They face the LaPrior Bulldogs in this district 14-2A Division II matchup. The Eagles 6-1 on the year. 3-0 in district play so far entering week five of districts. And that wraps up this week's Inside the Game. I know, I know it went faster than you wanted to see. You can always check out all of our content and head over to the Concho Valley homepage. You can also follow us on Twitter at KLST Sports. Make sure to use the hashtag Season Pass to stay in the conversation. It's always goodbye for here. It's not until next week. Thanks for hanging out tonight. I'm Brian Cunningham. Good night, Concho Valley from Inside the Game. Catering for Inside the Game is provided by Inside Chick the Game is sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group.